Welcome to the CMSC's virtual poster tour. This presentation is titled, Updated Recommendations for a Standardized MRI Protocol for Multiple Sclerosis. I'd like to introduce the presenter, Dr. Tony Trabulsi. Dr. Trabulsi is professor in the Department of Neurology and a director of the Multiple Sclerosis Clinic and the NMO Clinic at the University of British Columbia in Vancouver. Welcome, Dr. Trabulsi. Welcome, thank you uh, for having me. There is research showing that conformance to the CMSC's MRI guidelines and, in fact, other MR guidelines is low. Why do you think that is the case? Part of the um, challenge, I think, is people, or particularly MRI centers, don't realize how easy it is to implement the, um, these guidelines. The um, MRI protocol is meant to be very practical. And um, what we've been doing is working with manufacturers to try to incorporate the protocol into scanners so that it's really just a, a button to press for the MRI centers. And I think that will be getting over a major hurdle of adaptation. And once uh, we found, once radiologists started using the protocol, they were really happy with it. They found that they were using it beyond MS for other uh, basic neurology studies. So I think it's um, just really raising awareness and making things more uh, one-step process for individuals to use. Okay. Prior to this update of the guidelines, uh, CMSC members were polled for their input. What types of suggestions did you receive, and were any of those implemented? We got some really good suggestions from that, and uh, one um, was the interest around brain atrophy measurements. That's really been growing, that people want more quantitative information from their MRI scans to measure more than just inflammation. And we found that um, one of the, the hurdles, again, with the guidelines is getting people to adopt a sequence, a very simple sequence that is ideal for doing brain volumetrics over time. And um, so this really reinforces what we've been recommending doing these, what's called a 3D T1 weighted image. It takes less than five minutes, but is ideal for doing brain volume measurements. The guideline expert panel met in October 2019 to discuss these updates. Would you please review what is new in the current 2020 version and explain some of these changes? One of the um, major um, changes really reflects the advances in MRI technology, and that is being able to acquire high-resolution uh, MRI scans of um, called a 3D image, and that's particularly with uh, the flare sequences, which is what we use to identify lesions. And that takes very little time, but it allows us to be able to compare studies across time much more easily. And I think that's really a win-win for everyone. Uh, it, it's not a burden on the MRI sites to do, but it gives the quality of data that we need. And, um, and, and that's where this uh, Im repositioning along the subclosal line is still so important so that um, it's easier for us to compare studies over time. Uh, that becomes now a, a less um, challenging issue to do because the image quality is so good. The other thing we really addressed was um, some other emerging technology called the central vein sign. That's become very uh, popular in terms of interest that it might improve the specificity for making the diagnosis of MS to minimize the number of, of false um, uh, diagnoses of MS. And that's been a, a growing issue in the world that uh, because MRI is so much more available, many people have a few white spots and they're being misdiagnosed with MS. So the central vein sign is a very simple MRI technique that can identify lesions that have a vein in the center, and that's much more common in MS lesions. Um, however, it's still very labor-intensive to look at all these lesions, to look for the central vein sign. So while we address how to acquire the data, this hasn't really been incorporated in the diagnostic criteria because of that um, um, additional um, expertise required to, to uh, apply it, but we think that's uh, going to happen in the next uh, five years or so. What is different about the MRI that is being recommended to detect the central vein sign in uh, MS? It's really just another additional sequence. And so the central vein sign is based on a thing called susceptibility weighted imaging. That was actually traditionally used for fMRI or functional MRI studies, and it's just been evolved to collect more interesting information than just fMRI, and, and that's where mm -hmm. this uh, central vein sign evolved from, from that technique which detects um, iron within, uh, particularly within blood, and it's a, just a, a lovely technique. Okay, let's talk a little bit about PML surveillance. 
female surveillance uh, has been in our, our previous renditions and continues in, in this rendition and, and um, um, is, is a very important aspect of monitoring patients. Um, the, the therapies we have now are, are very effective for MS, but uh, some do carry a potential risk of causing brain infection. So we need a very uh, quick and um, comprehensive way to monitor before symptoms develop for complications such as PML, which is fortunately quite rare. And so the sequences that we've um, recommended were based on uh, expert opinion from those that have worked quite a bit with PML in the MS world. And um, they, um, if, if one just wants to survey for PML, it's uh, about a 10-minute scan. So it's, it's very uh, feasible to do as frequently as required for that center's preference. Can you give us a sense as to when the, the revised uh, recommendations are going to be released? One of the exciting uh, aspects that we've did was uh, partner up with uh, other groups, including uh, uh, North American Imaging Consortium called NAMES, as well as Magnum, so the European Imaging Consortium, so that uh, we've always envisioned the guidelines as being international, but now we have harmony with um, uh, Magnums that, uh, for the most part, really represent the European centers. And so this is truly a global uh, protocol. Uh, the harmony is wonderful between all the, the different recommendations, and this has been uh, submitted for publication. And so we hope uh, within um, this year that we'll see these guidelines, um, these combination guidelines, the CMSC names and magnums, in, in, out in, in publication this year, and, and that we can further disseminate this knowledge. It sounds like a really uh, important project and um, uh, really valuable for the MS community. Thank you so much for discussing that with me today. Great. Thank you.